Well, the first thing I discovered was that my screen flickers when I take videos of it. And usually uh, you can um, set your frame rate of your camera to be multiples of the frame rate of the screen and get rid of it, but it wasn't doing it here. But in the config menus, you can actually set the refresh rate of your screen. You could set it to PAL, or you could set it to uh, NTSC, or uh, a normal mode. Normal mode is going to refresh it at some bizarre rate, and that was flickering with the camera. So now that I've set it to N NTSC, uh, I think the uh, video will be much better. So uh, I've been getting used to all of the features of this thing, and there's a ton of them. And uh, one of the interesting things is calibrating this thing. There's a cal button. And you press that cal button, and then you wait 10 minutes. It calibrates everything. Oh my goodness, it takes, it takes a solid 10 minutes to do its whole calibration routine. So quite extensive. OK, let's measure some signals. Uh, I'm going to be using the uh, Tiny SA. I'm going to be uh, putting it into uh, RF generator mode. So I'll say mode switch to low out. And I'm going to be looking at 300 megahertz. And I will turn that on. And I have the spectrum analyzer set to 300 megahertz peak. And um, so let's see here. Let's do a span. Let's see, low modulation. Okay, let's do AM modulation. And there we go. We have AM modulation set. Uh, currently, we have a span of 20 kilohertz. And our resolution bandwidth is set to uh, 30 hertz, uh, 300 hertz. And so we can see these two side lobes, which are th uh, 1,000 hertz. Uh, we could even go a little farther in. Uh, let's see, where are we now? We're spanning, we're spanning 20 kilohertz. Let's span, oops, let's span 10 kilohertz. And now our resolution bandwidth has gone to 100 hertz. So you can see that we resolve, we resolve this very, very nicely. So let's say we want to measure the AM modulation depth. Uh, that's the relationship between the carrier and the height of the two side lobes. Uh, we could do that manually, but it actually has a built-in func function. I hit measure uh, AM, and it automatically finds these three points and automatically measures them at 56.7%. Uh, uh, 55, somewhere between 56 and 55% uh, percent modulation. It's varying a bit. Uh, so automatic AM, AM uh, modulation, that's pretty, pretty cool. All right, so let's go back out. Let's do span of uh, 1 megahertz. Uh, I think a span, span of half a megahertz will be better. So let's go to the tiny SA and turn on um, uh, wideband FM. So there's some wideband FM, and uh, it's very messy. Uh, FM is always messy. So let's go ahead and say we want to capture this uh, envelope. So let's see, we can, first of all, we need to turn off the uh, AM modulation measurement. All right. And now we need to turn on, um, we say trace and uh, max hold, and then it builds up. And then we can just say uh, view, which is hold. So we can view it, we can blank it, we can bring it back. So it's in memory right now. And so we have uh, uh, the actual measurement. Let's go ahead and go to trace B. So that's trace A. We can go to trace B. And we can go to narrowband FM on the uh, tiny SA. And there you see that's the narrowband FM. Uh, we can do the hold feature. Uh, max hold on. Oh no, I don't. I want to be on B. B max hold on B. So it builds that up. I will say view B. Uh, we can go back to A. Say view A. So there's both of them, right? So we can we can look at the two. So that's the narrow. That's the wide. Um, so let's say that we want to measure 
uh, the width of these things. We'll go to uh, go to one of them. Again, there's a built-in feature. I can say measure and I can say dB. It automatically finds the 3 dB point and measures that at 20 kilohertz. Um, I could go down if I wanted to measure instead of at the minus 3 dB point, I wanted to measure at the minus 6 dB point. I just say 6 and it automatically goes down, finds those two points and says that's at uh, 23.75 kilohertz. So again, built in, built in measurements, very cool. Um, having the two actually has three, has the ability to capture A, B and C traces um, and show those. Um, that's pretty cool. There's another feature that I haven't learned about yet. Um, you can turn windows on and uh, you can get uh, two windows and you can do like two different zooms. You could like change the settings of the top one. You could maybe increase the span. Let's see here. Uh, oh, well, these are uh, these are stored traces, so they're not going to move. But you can uh, you can kind of use it as a uh, the horizontal zoom on a oscilloscope, where you can you can go in and look at things. So I need to, I need to learn about this. Um, let's see. I can turn the windows off. Go back. Yep. Very cool. There's always the preset button, which uh, takes you back to ground zero. Just does everything. It's like on the tiny SA saying uh, load presets and uh, there's our 300 kilohertz. I had a viewer ask, well, what are you going to do without this uh, tracking generator? Uh, how are you going to overcome that? Well, I'm going to overcome it with a tiny SA. Yes, I am. <laughs> so I'm going to use the, um, see, is that on? I think that'll be okay on camera. Anyway, I'm going to set it to, um, yeah, let me. Let me kind of set it here so I can zoom in on it. Okay, I think you can read that. So um, I am going to use the output mode and I'm going to set a center frequency. This time it's uh, 83 megahertz. I have an 83 megahertz filter that I want to sweep. And I'm going to turn on uh, sweeping. The tiny SA can act as a generator. It can act as a sweep generator. So uh, it's going to output 83 megahertz at minus 15 dBm. It's not going to have any modulation. And I'm going to have it sweep uh, one megahertz of bandwidth. And it's going to do that over 9.9 .9 seconds. So it's going to sweep kind of slow. And um, so we're going to run that through, run that through a filter, which is right there. And then we'll come up here to the, to the screen. And if you look way down here, you might see a little blip up here. There, that's 83 megahertz. So let's zoom in on that. So we'll say frequency 83 megahertz and we'll span one megahertz. And there it goes. So it's uh, kind of uh, coming and going, and that's because of the um, filter. So the filter only lets it lets it through when it's at a certain frequency range. Okay. So let's go ahead and see if we can't capture that. So because this is a digital scope, we can uh, spectrum analyzer. We can uh, hit the uh, trace button, and we'll do a uh, hold. Uh, so now it uh, sweeps and it holds it. So there we go. That's the uh, filter response. Uh, we can hit frequency and we can move it around uh, and put it here. Uh, we can change the amplitude and look at the floor. Uh, so there we go. Uh, looks pretty nice. And we can go back to trace. We can say go back to normal mode and then do the hold thing. And there we go. It sweeps it out. Very nice. So let's uh, let's zoom in a little farther. We're spanning uh, one megahertz. So let's uh, let's span uh, half a megahertz 
and uh, zoom in, see if we can't uh, can't get a better picture. There we go. So it just kind of overrode it. We should probably do a uh, clear hold. <laughs> 